Link in the J.P. Morgan world of bonds, yield, price dynamics into real estate in the 30-year fixed mortgage. Yeah, absolutely. So if you look at the Fed funds rate, it's it's risen 150 basis points, but the 30-year fixed mortgage rate has risen by double that, 300 basis points all the way to 6%. Um, and we already are seeing the impact on the housing market from that move. And we will continue to see the housing market decline. But I think what's really important to note about this move, this move in financial conditions, is it's been so severe that in any other scenario, the Fed would have paused. The reason that they haven't paused this time, despite the fact that mortgage rates are up 300 basis points, is that the inflation environment is just not letting them. And I think what really spooked them um, uh, last week on Friday is that University of Michigan well, sentiment. Paul mentioned report. that yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he mentioned the University of Michigan sentiment tipping up, ticking up. Now, what we do know about the University of Michigan sentiment data uh, and the University of Michigan inflation expectations is it's very correlated to gasoline prices. And some of that increase in gasoline prices is out of their control. So they're putting themselves in a very difficult situation, but one where they're clearly saying we're going to prioritize inflation over growth. I mean, Lisa, one of the stories here is oil's only gone 124 to 118 on Brent. I mean, we barely had a pullback, Lisa. In oil. And it isn't necessarily translating into a pullback at the pump because gas prices, refined goods, are not getting cheaper because of a lack of refineries. How does this really bleed into credit, Kelsey, has been a question that we talked about with a lot of investors yesterday. They were seeing the prospect of wider credit spreads, of more credit losses kind of being implied despite the fact that you don't see near-term uh, maturities. Do you agree that it's the up-in-quality trade going to uh, higher rated debt, or do you think that there's some value given the eight and a half percent yields and high yields. Well, clearly, financial conditions are tightening and the risk of recession is rising. But if you look at current default rates, obviously, they're very low. They need to normalize somewhat. But corporate fundamentals are really strong, and companies have done a number of things to set them up for an environment where we're not particularly concerned about credit losses. They've done things like increase their cash, reduce their leverage, and also term out their debt. So if I look at the high-yield market, for instance, less than 6% of the market is maturing in 2022 or 2023. So there's not that much sensitivity uh, in the high yield market, which has become much more uh, higher in quality than it has historically to these higher rates. Now, I think that there is going to be volatility. And what we're focused on this summer is, is increasing the liquidity of our portfolios. Because the one thing that Chair Powell didn't talk about in the press conference was QT. But QT is happening. We're seeing massive moves. And we yeah. want to have the liquidity to sell it when it's expensive rather than need to buy it um, when, when there's a challenge. Lisa, is quote-unquote increasing liquidity the same as go to cash? Well, Kelsey, that's exactly what I was going to ask. How do you do that? Is, is it with ETFs? Is it with cash? Or is it with the securities that are most traded? I mean, it is dependent on the portfolio. If you think at the very baseline, we're thinking about, you know, going from off the runs to on the run treasuries, getting out of tips and into nominals, you know, things that are going to uh, have less ability to be intermediated uh, when markets are quiet, when people are going out on summer vacation and things are more likely to trade more with more volatility. Um, so essentially, the bond market has gotten much bigger and dealer balance sheets have not risen to the same size to accommodate that. And so we want to be prepared when people need liquidity to be able to give it. This is shocking to me, Tom, and really a reversal of what we've seen for so long when people were seeking out illiquidity. We are looking at the prospect of a Fed-driven uh, volatility cycle that we have not seen in a long time in credit. I'm just looking at the, at, at the you know, the, I, I've been, Kelsey, this has been a crusade of mine, is we're in a bond bear market and nobody's talking about it because nobody's used to it. And the answer is, if I look at the Bloomberg, the Barclays, the Lehman, total return, U.S. aggregate bond portfolio, these are double-digit losses, right? Absolutely. What's the plan? Absolutely. There's the two sides to that coin, right? You've seen massive losses, particularly in long bonds. The moves in yields, you know, if I look at the move over the week or the move over the month and you compare them to the last five years, these aren't just two standard deviation moves. These are four, five, six, seven standard deviation moves. I mean, it's just incredible. But then on the other side, you have the yield, this new starting yield. If you were to invest fresh capital now, that yeah. is a lot more attractive, uh -huh. as Lisa mentioned. 
mentioned, eight and a half percent on U.S. high yields is very attractive, and it's consistent with the re long-term returns um, in the equity markets as well.